Hi guys, how are ya? It is a fairly gloomy day today. It's not raining, but uh, it's a little gloomy here on the East Coast. Winter is coming. November is probably the most dull, drab, colorless, lifeless month of the year, especially here on the East Coast. We get a lot of rain and it gets a little cooler, a little colder every day or so. But on days like that, we can sit in the studio and play and that's why I'm here. So uh, welcome. I'm glad you all joined me today. What happened this week? What happened this week? We had a, a sick puppy. Miss Dot was not well. She's had a little bit of a back injury and she's recuperating and terrorizing the place. So her happy face is now back to bouncing. So we're happy about that. What else happened this week, bud? Uh, not much. Not much? It was a pretty much. quiet week. Pretty quiet. Except we watched a lot of the election stuff, but that is over, thank goodness. That's over and done with, so life can move on. Perhaps there'll be something else in the news now. <laughs> but today we're going to put all of that stuff aside and we're just going to play in some paint and have some fun. And the piece that I chose to do today is called Home is Where Your Honey Is, which I think is one of my favorite pieces. I really enjoy this piece, it's fun to paint. We have a little bit of stenciling to do and some flowers to paint and uh, we'll just have a good time doing it. Um, we did have a giveaway last week. We had a great little stencil uh, stencil set and a stencil brush and... Brenda the, Queen. What is it? Brenda Queen. <laughs> Brenda Owen. Owen. <laughs> <laughs> He's of that generation that can't read... Cursive. Cursive. <laughs> I could read cursive if it was done right. So, Brenda Owen, keep your eyes peeled. Honey, we have your uh, your little goodie box heading your way shortly. And uh, I have a giveaway for this week. Pretty nice one. Um, next Friday, I am teaching a live Zoom class uh, with uh, this new piece that I've got called Peppermint Tea. It's back there behind me. And um, one of you is going to win the pattern for that and the stencils. So yeah, so that is the price. So don't forget to put a comment in the comment section, hit the share button so that uh, the video gets shared around and you'll automatically be entered for the drawing for that pattern. It, has, it is not on the website and won't be until after the class. So you'll be one of the first to get it. Alrighty, I think we're just about ready to get started. <laughs> You're good. Okay, so this is the piece that I chose to do today. I, th I like this piece, I think it's fun. It's got bright sunny colors and it's got bumblebees in it, so how bad can it be? So this is the one I'm going to do today. And to get started on that, of course there's stencils because it's me, so there's stencils. Now I base coated the surface uh, with country red. I've got two coats on here. It doesn't need to be neat and tidy. It can be pretty, um, ragged as long as it's relatively smooth i think that's about the only real concern so i'm going to secure this stencil in place this is the chicken wire stencil i haven't used this one in quite a while so um i thought it would be fun to use this and i'm going to use my stencil pro now i'm going to stencil this with a little bit of warm white you don't need a ton of paint on the brush for this and it's not even going to be all that perfect. It's just going to sort of hint at this chicken wire pattern in the background. So neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. It's a nice draw brush. And we're going to put it everywhere. But again, I'm not, if you look, this stencil is not perfect. It's just getting a little pattern in that background is all we're really doing. I kind of like this chicken wire. It gives things sort of a country feel without being too over the top. So now I'm going to move that. And this is a fun one to line up because it's all of those bits and pieces. The cat is in her basket snoring and she just rolled over. Now she's got one foot sticking out of her basket. She's not very ladylike. 
So just like that. I'm not worrying too much about getting opaque coverage. It's going to be kind of spotty, which is fine. Just as long as we get that pattern everywhere, we're good. Excellent. So I'm just going to do the bottom half of this. And again, I'm not, not looking for perfection here. Just a little bit of pattern in the background. We're going to bury this underneath a, a glaze layer. So that's why I'm not too worried about it. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so we have a little of that stencil in there. I've got a little spot here that I've got a little too much, little too much color on. So I'm going to take my sanding sponge and wear through it a little bit. I think it's a little too bright. There we go. It's a nice thing about paint. It's just paint. So now I need a high-tech applicator. And I'm going to make one out of a sheet of shop towel, which means I'm going to tear it into quarters, like so. And I'm going to make a little ball and tuck it inside this one. There, high-tech applicator. I'm going to get that wet. I want it nice and wet, but I don't want it dripping. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of soft black. A little bit. Looks like a generous amount. This part is really scary for some. I love this part. So I'm going to wash that color in to the corners like that and along the edge. Don't be scared. This color actually goes on quite nicely and it punches up that red really nicely. I love how this color works over red. Now, the idea being, I want to keep this center area a little brighter than the rest. So you can be quite heavy handed with this in the corners and along the edges and a little less so in the middle. Now the color goes everywhere, but it's strongest at the outside edge. Just like that. I kind of like how this just gives it an, ooh, we get a schmegly. A what? A schmegly. Uh, okay. It's a technical term for a gooey paint thing. <laughs> a gooey paint thing. You know, you get those gooey, snotty things in your paint bottles, so it's, it's called a schmegly. A schmegly. <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. I'm going to dry this real quick. If I dry it fast, then I can put another coat on. There we go. So I'm going to pick up a little more because I want this to, let's see, this corner here. I just want to sort of balance things out, smooth them out a little bit. I love how soft black looks over red. It's just so rich. And it makes things more interesting. And you'll notice I'm keeping that center area light, or lighter, I should say, just to, for placement. There, I think that's just about it. I think that's good. I don't want to mess with it too much. So I'm going to break out my handy dandy dryer again.
So there is your background. Easy peasy. Now you can see why it doesn't need to be an utterly perfect base coat. You don't have to worry about things being in perfectly uniform. Because you're going to put this aging on the outside edge, it just gives it a little more depth and it brings all of the attention towards the center of this piece. So even though we're going to have some bright yellow sunflower in there, having that darker frame allows the eye to travel in and look directly at the focal point, which is this teacup with the sunflower. So you trace and transfer your line drawings on, and then you're going to base coat. The base coats are very straightforward. Now, one of the things that I do when I'm base coating something yellow, I will put a coat of either white gesso or warm white paint on the petals first. That way you're not having to put on four or five coats of yellow to get this nice rich yellow look. So everything that is yellow gets a coat of warm white or white gesso. And then the yellow goes over top of that. So it is sunny day, warm white, and then sunny day for the petals on the flowers and for the teacup all of these areas on the teacup. And then the leaves are base coated with antique green. And that includes these little small leaves up here. And the bumblebees, they get the same treatment as the flowers. Again, they are done with the sunny day and the warm white. Okay, so we've got talked about the base game, except for the center. The center is asphaltum. I put one really good coat of asphaltum. See, I actually painted something this week that didn't have asphaltum on it and I, I suffered from withdrawal, so um, I had to put it in somewhere. <laughs> it's not heroin. <laughs> it is to me, I use it all the time. <laughs> so, the so the center is done with the asphaltum, and then the, uh, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to pull this over because we're going to talk about stenciling this teacup. I now, actually think I know the answer to this question, but why do you prefer shop towels over regular paper towels? Because they don't shed, I don't get any lint. lint. They're lint free, or as close to lint free as you can get. And uh, they're durable, they hold up a lot better. If I used a paper towel to do that background, it would just shred. I'd end up with stuff everywhere. Yeah. So this is a trick that I use for stenciling areas when you know you're going to have elements overlapping. So I, what I did was I cut the teacup section out and I'm going to put my stencil on like so and I'm going to tape it into place so that it doesn't move. And this just prevents me getting the, uh, the mustard seed, I think it's mustard seed or marigold, this deep golden yellow on everything that I don't want it to be on. So I'm going to just stencil right over this. And I missed, I didn't get any paint in this brush. Here we go. So if I get it on these stripes on this, it doesn't really matter. I haven't base coated them with the, uh, with the black yet. And I did that for a reason. I didn't want to get any of the yellow on the black. So I'm just going to stencil like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this last strip over here. So essentially what you're doing is masking off large areas of your piece so that you can stencil without making a mess of things. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to base coat these stripes with lamp black. I love this honeycomb stencil. It's just so pretty. I found, where's my rigger? Here it is. So I'm using lamp black to do the base coating in here and I like doing the black afterwards because you can clean up all kinds of little baubles 
with it. The black will cover up so many sins, as they say. And you can crisp up edges and sharpen things. And the black covers nicely. They're quiet today. I think we've been answering way too many questions. <laughs> or answering them before they have a chance to ask. <laughs> So yeah, it's, you can see that by putting that black in after the fact, you get a much cleaner line. You get to fix little baubles and little errors. And I like the black for sharpening things up. It gives everything a nice crisp look. So little areas where I've perhaps bobbled my base coat, which I did with that yellow in a couple of places. Bubbled. Bubbled. Wobbled. He doesn't like my terminology. <laughs> or questions it anyway. No, I don't question the terminology. <laughs> it's a whole new language. You it's don't speak new... mom after all this time? <laughs> well, it's not speaking mom. Hmm? Speaking artsy fartsy. Ah, okay. <laughs> artsy fartsy. That is a language. Okay, so we're just about there with this. I don't know, I, I just like this bright yellow with the black. It's just sharp. Looks really nice. Now I've got one coat of antique green on those leaves. Just one. I like to have two because you can still see some of the red through it. He's been moving my paint bottles, trying to keep them at the range of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so antique green is one of my favorite greens, but I do like two coats, especially over this red, just to cover up well. So we're going to talk about painting the sleeve. And again, because I've only got the one coat on. I'm just going to quickly put in a second coat. Now, I'm not really worrying too much about the perfection of this, but when I do base coat leaves, I try to base coat them in the shape of the leaf. So if there's a curve in the leaf, I try to follow that curve when I'm base coating instead of just a Mod Podge of color everywhere. Where in Canada do you live? I live in the little village of New Maryland, New Brunswick, which is on the East Coast. Uh, probably about an hour and a half from the Bay of Fundy. And uh, overlooking the St. John River Valley. That is where we live. It's a very pretty area, very historic area. It's the government seat here, provincial capital. What color could I use in place of the antique greens? Um, you know what? I like antique green because I like that, that darker um, and old value. But honestly, you could use um, any of the avocados. Avocado green would be nice. Forest green? For, well, forest green's I got a lot of yellow in it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I try to go for the more earthy ones, and that way you can use some of the brighter greens for Sap highlighting. Green. Sap green's closer to uh, plantation pine, which is a darker. So we've got the leaf fully base coated. I'm going to dry that in just a second. And then we'll talk about shading and highlighting this leaf. I'm not using a really um, elaborate means of shading and highlighting these leaves. Let's dry this real quick. Now I tend to lean towards the fluid acrylics as most of you know. I love the, the colors in it. So I use sap green 
and I use plantation pine. So I really do prefer using the sap green, but if you don't have it, plantation pine will work just fine. I like the plantation pine for this reason. It's very transparent and it's very dark. Um, another really great green to shade with is the, um, oh, my brain shut off, is uh, <laughs> black green. <laughs> Gotta hate that. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to load an angled shader as if I'm going to float because that's what I'm going to do. Close to the press dial. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, we're only about two hours away. Okay. Yep. We're very yeah, close to me. <laughs> well, press Kyle is just across the border near St. Stephen. Just go past. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I'm putting that sap green up underneath the petals of my sunflower. I need some more water in this brush. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Had babies to tend to. <laughs> Family first. Yep. So there I've got that shadow underneath those petals. And I want to put a center vein on this leaf. And I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to shade down to the point. Just like that. So now I have that nice dark shadow underneath those petals and then down that center vein. And this gives that mention. Yeah, it gives and it shapes that that leaf really nicely. Now there's a new color in the Decorate lineup called matcha green. And I gotta tell you, this is my new favorite green. It does look like guacamole. <laughs> really good guacamole. <laughs> but matcha green is... Um, I'm hungry now. It's got a really nice... You're always hungry. You step on your foot and your mouth opens. So I'm going to tip load this brush with a little of that matcha green. You can use olive green um, or you can use margarita. I'm just for whatever reason, quite partial to this matcha green these days. So I'm going to add a highlight to this portion of that leaf right there with this matcha green. And it's just a float and I've got a little too much water in my brush. There we go, a little better. And I'm taking that highlight right down to the point of that leaf. It's going to go over that shadow, that's okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on opposite that. Right there. I hope so much to see you at OKC Painting Palooza. In May, I can't wait. It's gonna be so much fun. Hopefully everything has settled down by then. That would be nice. So I carry that highlight out to this edge of the leaf as well. And it's gonna look a little rough for a bit. And that's okay. What is Schmegglies? What was the shading color for the leaf? The leaf, I used sap green, but you can use plantation pine or black green. I like the sap green. It's the transparency for me. I really love the, the fluid acrylics for that, but they are difficult to get these days. So uh, you can use what you have in your arsenal. If you have black green, then by all means use it. You just need a rich, dark, fairly transparent green. Okay, everybody has days where they can't float. I'm having one. So I'm going to dry this real quick. Now I'm going to come back to that uh, sap green 
and I'm going to blend it out quite well. So I want a very transparent float for this. And I'm going to come back to that center lane, center line, oh my gosh. And a nice wide float right to the tip of the leaf. And the minute you put that shadow in, it deepens everything. And it also tones down that highlight just a bit where we overlapped. And it gives that a little more depth. So now we've got this nice curve in the leaf. Nice, I like it. So I'm going to do the same thing underneath here. I'm going to start shading this leaf. I like that little shadow under there. Lifts that flower off of the leaf. And this leaf has that same curve. Right to the point. <laughs> it makes us all feel better that you have bad float days too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, some days it's just, no. Some days you just can't seem to load a brush the way you want to. Some days, you know, the floating thing just doesn't work. So, but there's all kinds of little tricks and techniques that you can use to alleviate that. Uh, one of your sponge. My sponge, exactly. If I had my sponge, I'd be. Right there. I think it's under the kitchen sink. <laughs> yeah. I turfed out my old sponge. But I like that highlight coming up on both sides, just a little. It makes a world of difference, and then it doesn't feel so heavy. I think he went to get me my sponge. What? This sponge. Oh, Okay, so this is my trick. You have a bad floating day. It's a kitchen sponge, cellulose, and it's wet, but it's not dripping. Yes, it is dripping. Okay, you didn't. It's a brand new one. It's a brand new one, okay. So it should be just wet. It shouldn't be loaded. And then when you get your brush wet to float, just touch the surface of the sponge with your brush. and it'll just pull out enough of the liquid to allow you to float. Oh yes, the see, that's what I needed. I needed my, I needed my sponge. This just takes the excess water out of the brush and it helps you maintain that balance that you need to get a nice consistent float. I wish my good float days looked as good as your bad float days. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not having a great float day, but that sponge makes a world of difference. There it is. Oh yeah, much better. <laughs> much, much better. So now that this one is dry. I'm going to come back in with another float of that matcha green. <laughs> so cool. Sponge! Or sponge. And then I can brighten that. Oh yeah, see that's what I needed. I just couldn't seem Sometimes to get that. glass of wine helps my float. <laughs> There's an idea, but it's a bit early in the day. <laughs> I 
Yeah, well, during all of this COVID thing, the uh, day drinking has become a national sport, I think, for some. Canada. It was always a national <laughs> sport. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got highlights and shading on those leaves. And now I'm going to come down to this teacup because I want to get some shadows underneath that teacup. Now the color I'm using... Renee knows how to keep Mama happy. <laughs> it does. He found my sponge. So I, one of my favorite colors to use when painting sunflowers is quinacridone gold, which is, this is one of the fluid acrylics in here. But you can do this with burnt sienna too. You're just going to have to thin out the burnt sienna. I've got some burnt sienna right here. Hasn't been opened in a while, so it needed a shake. So there's the burnt sienna. I'm going to pick up a little bit on my brush and I'm going to blend it out well. I don't want this color full strength because it's very strong. And I'm going to come up underneath those leaves and under those petals with a float of that burnt sienna. Right onto the yellow. And you can walk that color down a little. Don't be afraid to pull that color into the yellow. It just makes the yellow that much richer. I just love how this looks on the yellow. So we've got that underneath. And then I'm going to bring that same color down here at the base and I'm going to walk it up a little bit. Maybe about half an inch or so. Just walk the color up. Now, I love the quinacridone gold for this. It's, a it's more transparent and it has a little more red in it. So, so it tends to get just that much richer. But as I said, the burnt sienna will work just fine. It's a good day to do this. Needed some sunny colors, some bright yellows and whatnot, because it's a rather cloudy. Oops, I think maybe the sun popped out there for a little bit. Love it. So there we go. Now, as far as finishing off this teacup, once this is completely dry, I'm going to come in with, you guessed it, a little bit of asphaltum. <laughs> God forbid I paint anything that doesn't have anything in it. So, get a little bit of asphaltum on here. And again, maybe a little too much water in the brush. There we go. And again, I'm blending these colors out so that they are not full strength. I don't want them to be too, too strong. So a little bit of asphaltum underneath there. Just deepens the colors. And you can do the same thing along the bottom here. There we go. So we've got our teacup done. Now we have to do the, the saucer and the handle, but we'll get onto that in a little bit. I want to come up here to this sunflower. Now, the center of the sunflower is just a base coat of asphaltum, but we need to give it a little bit of depth. So I'm going to float a little lamp black in the middle, and it's just going to be a little bowl like so in the middle, just to form that sort of cup look in the middle of the flower. Just like that. Now, all of these petals, as 
did you know I love my quinacridone gold but you can use the burnt sienna it will work too Received so much fault from Pinecraft okay Pinecraft they've been around for quite a while and they've just uh, recently started I've been seeing more and more of their advertising they do some beautiful woodwork too so I'm going to shade all of these petals with a float of that burnt sienna or that quinacridone gold. And you'll note that the shadow is going in towards the center of this flower. You're getting better at keeping it in the shot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bigger piece. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting that little shadow at the base of the petals for now. And again, it isn't a meticulous float. It doesn't need to be. We're just getting a little bit of the color in. Just to shape this flower a little bit. Like so. And now I'm going to start using it to separate some of these petals. I love this color. Now, I don't worry too much about getting these meticulous, um, simply because I'm using, I use my gel pen a lot for detailing and doing final detailing. So this is not meant to be you know, flawless floats. And, <laughs> cheater! <laughs> cheater! It's not cheating. There we go. Now I'm going to put a little center vein on some of these petals. Notice I use the heel of my brush a lot. I use it to blend things out. Just to soften little areas so that they don't get too harsh. And these tight little floats. this color it's just rich and it plays well with yellow one of the tricks that I use for um, base coating is that that first coat I always leave a fine line or a fine narrow space between areas so along these petals here there would be a fine line and so once I have that white on and I put that one coat of yellow over top I can still see that line right through the yellow paint so then I know exactly where my shading needs to go This works up fairly quick. You don't have to putz with it too much. It's giggling about my use of the word putzing. <laughs> and I've got a couple of spots here where I've neglected the shadows. Our sunflower is starting to take some shape. Oops. Oops. That's a little aggressive. Just a touch. <laughs> Got a little heavy handed there. I 
There we go. Much better. <laughs> Describe jumping. Capital letters. Describe what? Gel pen. Oh, my gel pen. <laughs> Describe gel pen. <laughs> <laughs> this is my gel pen. This is a, it's a Uniball Signo DX. It's 0 0.38, so it's a very, very fine point. And it's also a Japanese ink, so it's very, very black. And so I, it works beautifully over top of acrylic paint. Uh, the only thing that I do recommend with it is before you varnish, is just to spray it with a, a sealer of some sort beforehand, just to avoid it. I haven't had that issue with running or smearing, but um, I, I habitually spray things anyway, so. But it is my favorite pen, and I love it for details, little fun details and sketchy business on this, on some of my artwork. I just like how it looks. Okay. So I'm going to now do one more float along here just to deepen all of that shading. I'm going right along the edge of that inside of that flower, like so. And I'm going to do the same thing in here just to deepen this a little bit. And then I'm going to show you a really neat, neat, neat trick. So I'm going to float a little bit of warm white onto the tips of these petals, like the highlight parts of these petals. So a little bit of warm white here and here. And again, neatness doesn't really count. I'm just going to put a few little highlights on these petals like so. I'm surprised you're not using a point blender for that. Um, in this case, I just, I prefer to use the angled shader. It's just faster and simpler. And that little bit of white is going to actually make the next step really jump off this surface. So it's just essentially a quick highlight in a few places on the tips of these petals. Because when I do this next thing, they're just going to come screaming off of there. So this is not traditional toll painting by any stretch of the imagination. It's sort of a combination of things. A little bit of mixed media, a little bit of I don't know, perhaps some fine art painting, a little bit of toll and decorative combination of a bunch of things. But I like that little bit of white and you'll see why in just a minute. So I've just put little punches of that white in place, some highlight areas. I'm not really being too finicky about it. It's just getting that color in. So now it brightens up that flower a little bit. I'm going to grab some diorylide yellow. If you don't have diorylide yellow, which is this really in your face school bus yellow, that uh, is in the media line. If you don't have it, good old saffron yellow will do the trick very nicely. Give me that. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little of diorylide on my palette. Now this is not a wa uh, float, this is more of a wash. I'm going to add a fair amount of water to this so that the paint is heavily thinned and watch these flowers jump. I'm just putting a wash of that diorylide over top of everything. Wow, that shows up really nice on camera. So that jump of color, that little bit of that diorylide over that white, if I didn't put that white in, you wouldn't get that as much of a pop. 
but I love how those flowers just jump the minute you put that thin wash and it is just a wash of color over top not a ton of color I'm still working from that original little puddle that I pulled to the side grab a little bit more Mm -hmm. My closed captioning is calling that diarrhea yellow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, uh, yep, it is diarrhilide. Just diarrhea. to reiterate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, diarrhea yellow definitely pops the color. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So you can come back in and deepen shadows as you please in a few places, wherever you please, with that burnt sienna or with the quinacridone gold like I've done. So now that I've got all of that yellow in there, I love how this just jumps off of that, especially on that red surface. I love how it looks on there. So you can take a little asphaltum and deepen some shadows if you like. I, of course, am going to because I like my asphaltum. And I also want to crisp up a few places. And make the division between petals a little sharper. And I, I do that with that little float of asphaltum. And it doesn't have to be much. You don't have to use a ton of color. It's amazing to me that just a little bit of asphaltum can make such a difference when it comes to creating some depth. And if I want to separate petals more give them more definition, a little bit of asphaltum goes a long way. So I think I'm just about done putzing with this. I'm going to... And this is where I, um, I usually break out my gel pen for this. I'm gonna dry this real quick though. like to break out my gel pen. I don't worry about you know getting those details perfect. It's just a sketchy line that I put in. I put in a few little odds and sods. If this is not to your taste you don't have to do this but this is just what I do. I like the um, I think I like the looseness of this where it's not so heavily structured. I think that it softens the the image a little. I think it also creates a little bit of texture within the piece. Also it hides like if you're not happy with smooth crisp lines, you know, you can create some new ones. Just keep them simple. I like the looseness of this. I just think that it, it makes it pretty. So there we go. That light sketchy line. I like doing this on a lot of different things. It's I do it on dragonflies and bumblebees all the time. I just like how it looks. And we're going to do something similar to the leaves, but I'm going to do it with um, with a liner brush and some paint. 
and you'll see what I mean by softening edges. And I remember going back probably 30 years or so, it was a popular thing to add stitch marks to all of your painted pieces. These little dashes and dots to represent stitch marks was a popular detail that people used to put in or lettering had polka dots on the ends of them. And it's just a fun little detail to add. So I've got that sketchy line in. You can do the same thing to the edges of this yellow on the teacup. Just a little sketchy line like so. Like stitch marks or irregular lines. So wherever that yellow is, you can add that little sketchy detail. Just a sketchy irregular line all the way. Just keeps things loose and fun. And I do the same thing to a lot of things. I do it to my bumblebees as well. So there we have our, oh goodness, didn't need that brush, I threw it away. Okay. So I've got, this is a 15 aught um, micron, extra long micron liner. It's a very fine liner. And I've loaded it up with a little bit of matcha green, but I'm gonna put a little more water in this because it's a little too strong yet. There we go. And I like taking a liner and just putting a sketchy line around leaves, like so. So if you're not happy with edges on something, if it's not as crisp and as clean as you would like, then go ahead and use that sketchy line. It hides a multitude of sins. It helps make things look a little bit softer. And it does make things look a little prettier too. Just like that. I also add, I like adding little curly cues to the ends of my leaves too. Just like that. Now all of those little vines and tendrils that you have coming off of here are all done with that matcha green or the light green, olive green, whichever, whatever green you're using. I'm a firm believer you don't need to have the exact color. You can use something close. Did she forget the handle or is she waiting till towards the end? Oh, I'm going to do the handle. Don't worry. <laughs> no, it's this handleless teacup. It's a, right now it's just a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stemless wine glass. Yeah. Oh, I don't like those. How many of you broken? All of them. <laughs> Accidentally and otherwise, I just don't like them. So there's those little leaves up there. I'm going to base coat those now that I'm thinking about it. Now that handle on the teacup is based with lamp black. But I like to do each of those segments individually and with reason. I have a reason. So if I base coat this in, if I were just to base coat that shape, I would have to transfer those line drawings back on and then figure out a way to make them all look separate, which means shading and highlighting. Well, it's not easy to shade black. So I like to base coat each section separately. So and then I, as I do it, I leave a space between them, usually just the width of that line drawing or that line from the line drawing, I should say, so that I can see that shape. And the neat part is, is that once all that graphite is erased, you just have this dark red line in between that's very, very narrow. 
It's not big at all. Just like so. <laughs> Oops. I missed. There we go. I've got a couple more pieces. I usually try to have everything base coated ahead of time, but uh, you know one of those days today. Couldn't find my butt with both hands. Okay, so the handle is just done with this lamp black. And as I said, I've left a very narrow space in there. I'm going to give that a chance to dry. And that little space is going to help define the shape of this. But we are going to add a highlight to that handle. As soon as it's dry, anyway. So while we're waiting for that handle to dry, let's talk about these bees. I do love my bees. So the wings on these little guys are based with warm white and I'm only using one coat you don't need to have three or four coats on I'm going on an hour yep we're getting there So I'm not worrying about getting it completely opaque. There's no need for them to be. I'm just trying to avoid getting my fingers in the black paint there. The dark background and the green really pops that yellow. Yes, it does. It's one of, I love red for yellows, putting a red background. Extreme contrast. Yeah. Color contrast. And they're complementary colors as well. Oof, see, I was trying to avoid doing that and I meant put my finger in it anyway. So there's my bee. He's base coated with warm white on the wings and also on his thorax. No, I don't has a, have a lisp. Thorax. And then the rest of him is going to get painted with the lamp black. And again, I always try to segment, keep those little segments separate with that little space between. Especially with black because you can't see so easily with it. There we go. all of this will it be safe to watch later yes it will be up on the YouTube channel later today hungry oh my goodness my tummy's rumbling so there we have our little bee base coated and I use little just little dots of black to form the the legs on this little guy now I'm gonna get my dryer out and dry this Ooh, doesn't want to dry there we go So our little bee is now base coated. I'm going to use a little bit of Sunny Day, which is that same yellow we used for the sunflower. 
a bright and sunny color. And I'm going to go over that white on the thorax with the sunny day. See what that little coat of white paint or white gesso makes a huge difference on that yellow. If I tried to cover up that red with just the yellow, I'd be here for a month of Sundays. Trying to get that color covered. But that one little coat of white paint works wonders. So our B has nice bright yellow thorax. He's got white wings and a black body. We'll dry him up real quick. Now I want to carry the color from that sunflower onto my bees. And with good reason. When you carry the color, it unifies your piece, brings balance to the artwork. So I'm going to use that same color that I used to shade my sunflowers. I'm going to use to pop that yellow on my bee. So I'm just putting a float down one side, nice wide one. And on the other side, I'm just going to put a thin line of it, just a small narrow float on the other side so that the center portion of that bee's body remains nice and bright. So I'm going to go into the warm white. Now I've switched over to a small angled shader for this because he's a fairly small surface. So we're going to start adding a couple of highlights to, these, to this bee. And I'm just using a little too much warm white. Blend it out a little. And I'm going to put a float of warm white at the top of that on the body of this bee. Just a little highlight. And I'm going to do the same thing on his thorax with that little float of warm white right there. And so now our bee has a highlight. And now I need to grab a little bit of Bahama blue or cobalt teal. Knocking things over. So I've got a little bit of Bahama blue. And again, I'm going to pick up just a small amount on that angle shader. And I'm going to put that blue as close to the body as I can get, but on the wing. So right in here, close to the body. Somebody came down from her nap. <laughs> So there is that little bit of blue on the wings. And now we're going to put a final highlight on that bee. And I do that with just a couple of little dip dots, a little stroke here, like that. And then I come back in with my gel pen for this one. And again, just a scribbly line around the wings. Is this an e-packet? It is, yes, it is available on the website. And I like to take that little bit of texture onto the bee. Again, just a sketchy little line to define the bee. And the same thing around the wings. Easy peasy. Those bees are fun to do. So I'm going to come back with my angled shader and that warm white. And I'm going to blend that color out really well because I don't want it full strength. And I'm going to start adding a float to each of those segments on the handle. Just like that. Just a small highlight on that curve.
and then I'm going to do a final highlight with a little bit of warm white, put water in it, and just like this. Tiny little stroke on the handle, like that. There we go. Now, we only have a couple more things to do. Obviously, we have to paint the uh, saucer, but I'm going to focus on this. This is the tag on this piece. And I'm just going to base coat this with a little bit of warm white. We're not going to do the lettering today because that will take us a bit long, but the there are a number of the videos on my YouTube channel that have explanations on how I do the lettering. So I'm not going to worry too much about that today, but I did want to complete this teacup and the tag because there's a couple of things that I think are pretty, um, pretty interesting in this. So I'm just going to finish up this tag. Okay, so I'm going to dry this real quick. So, so here is our tag. We've got some I've got one coat of warm white on it. I think I might have to put a second one on just to get it nice and opaque. Well, reasonably so anyway. There we go. Second coat ever takes as long. Oops. Okay, so I'll dry that one really quick and then we'll talk about how we do the edges of this tag. Oops. Okay, so to make that tag look a little bit older and a little bit careworn, for lack of a better term, I'm going to put a float of asphaltum on it. And I like to do the edges so that all the color is on the outside edge. And I don't take it completely to the edge. So you notice that there's a little thin line of the white around the outside edge. So I've gone all the way around. Kind of gives this a heavily distressed look. And then I come in with my gel pen yet again, but I think I have to try this first. And again, I do that little sketchy thing, but you notice where it's going. It's on that little white border that we left on there. Neatness doesn't count. All the way around. Now you can use the font that's in the pattern for this or you could use your own handwriting. I mean or you could use stamps. I've also used stamps to to do that. I am going to take my liner brush. Now there is a tag, a string that holds that tag in place. Now to make that look a little more dimensional, I'm going to take a little asphaltum on my angled shader. 
and I'm going to put a shadow like this from underneath that flower to just a little past the edge of that tag, the point of that tag. And then I'm going to put my line along with it. So what that does is it creates a shadow for that thread or that line and casts it onto the back of the surface. If, in this case, I didn't quite get that shadow quite dark enough, so I'm going to use a liner brush to put it in. There we go. So there's my shadow. And I'm going to put a shadow underneath. Where did my brush go? There it is. I'm also going to put a shadow underneath my tag. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start base killing this edge of this saucer. Now I'm just base coating this with a little bit of the warm white. And again, this little band on the saucer is yellow. So to avoid having to put, you know, five coats of yellow paint over that red, I'm going to put a coat of the warm white. really rumbling. We didn't stop to eat lunch this morning. <laughs> okay. There, I have the warm white in. Now the bottom of this is just the lamp black. around here today. Oh good heavens. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so we're almost done here. I'm just gonna finish up this little bit here. usually have everything base coated. Today I'm just a little behind the eight ball for some reason. It's all good. Okay. So I'm going to take that sunny day, a little of that sunny day, and some more, and I'm going to go over that white. And see, look at that, just one coat, boom. camera acting up again. There we go. There we go. Well, I wanted to put that shadow underneath my, my tag, but couldn't do it because the yellow wasn't in place for the saucer. So let's finish that. Dry this real quick. And we are on the home stretch with this one. So I'm going to pick up a little of that quinacridone gold, that same color that I used 
to shade my teacup and I'm going to put a little of that on the ends here. I'm going to walk it out a little bit and I'm going to put a shadow underneath that tag to lift it off that surface just like so. And we'll give that a second to dry. And I just saw something I want to fix because I whoopsied when I floated that white in. I want to clean up a couple of edges here. There we go. So we'll dry that. And while I've got you here, I want to show you something. Um, you know, I talk about the graphite lines disappearing after a while. I know, I had some erasers in here. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite eraser for painting with. It's a Factus Black. And the reason I like them is one, I work a lot on dark backgrounds. And working with an eraser on a dark background, sometimes you get polished areas or spots. I really don't like that. And the fact is black eraser does not smear or smudge and it doesn't polish or rub your paint off. And that's why I like using them. So I can take that white graphite off very easily with this eraser and it doesn't polish that background and it doesn't smear the graphite everywhere. So I can clean up things very easily with this eraser. I love these things. And you can get these at Michael's. I think they're five or six dollars for two erasers. They're worth every penny because you can take off graphite so easily with them. So if you don't have a really great eraser, get yourself one of these. They're fantastic. I use them constantly. General Pencil. Ask Kathy Hansen. She'll know where to get one. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we've just about hit the end of this one for today. We're not going to do the lettering for this, but this is how it ends up. I Once I finish out my bees and my lettering, I go at it with a little bit of spatter and uh, then it's good to go. I like this piece. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Um, I enjoy it. It's a fun piece. Give me a second. I had a camera die on me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, camera <laughs> crash. <laughs> nope. No luck? And just hold that one up. <laughs> Come on. Oh, cameras don't want to switch. <laughs> and three, there you go. Oh, there we go. All set now. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. A um, little abbreviated, but it was running a bit long, and we don't want to spend too, too much time um, on here. We get... Uh, other people are using some of this airspace on Facebook too. So we don't want to chew up all of their time as well. So hopefully you got something out of this today. Um, I enjoyed it. I always enjoy painting this piece. It's a lot of fun. Uh, don't forget, hit the uh, share button on this and uh, leave a comment in the comment section and you'll be entered to win that peppermint tea pattern. It is a print version. We're going to mail it to you. It's not an e-packet. And um, join me next week. Uh, we got a great midweek video up yesterday or the day before Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, scattered today, but uh, yeah. So we had a great little one up. Pattern is available on the website. Pattern is available for this one on the website as well. We'll have a new midweek video for you this week. Plus, we have live again on Saturday. It's going to be a busy week because I've got a couple of Zoom classes too. <laughs> so have a great week. Don't forget to hit the share button and uh, go visit my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. And what am I missing? Uh, there's going to be a big announcement on the next Saturday Live class. Oh, yes. We have an announcement on next Saturday's Live. Big one. Big one.
So yeah, we're rather excited about it. Yeah. Okay guys, that's it for me today. Mwah. Love you. Stay safe.